Thank you.
Good evening. Good evening. Good to see everyone out this evening. Uh, great, beautiful, sunshiny day today. The Lord certainly blessed us with a beautiful day. A uh, few announcements this evening, following service this evening, cantata practice. Also following service Wednesday evening, cantata practice. Still plenty of time to join in and have your voice heard in the choir. Uh, so if you want to be part of that, stick around this evening. Uh, come back Wednesday night, sing with them again. Uh, get geared up for the holiday season, especially the Christmas season. Uh, tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock, WMU meeting here at the church. Uh, so keep those things in mind. Don't forget midweek worship Wednesday. We are still studying. Lord, change my attitude before it's too late. Uh, so keep that in mind. Be part of it. Continue in prayer for one another. Uh, continue in prayer for our Adopt-A-Cop through WMU. It must be working pretty well. I saw Officer Miller uh, this morning. Looks like he's putting on a little weight, so we must be buying for him going out to lunch. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but keep that in mind as we go through. Don't forget, next Sunday, all college and career, your class is beginning Sunday morning. That'll be at 10 o'clock. Uh, good times together there in that class. I think there'll be a pretty special teacher, although he's a little confused tonight. He's got on maize and blue. I don't know why. He'll tell you it's not maize and blue, but it sure looks like it. Uh, so good things coming here at church. Uh, keep each other in mind. Also, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. We'll be having a Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner together on December the 9th. There is a sign-up list in the foyer to add your name to, to bring something for that meal. Uh, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to pick up the phone, call the church office. I can guarantee you Venice is going to have the answer for you. Uh, so lots of things up and coming. Uh, don't forget to pray for one another as we go through this week and our many uh, church family that are sick and that just need the Lord in their lives. Uh, yeah, ushers, if you'd come this evening to take the offering. Join with me in prayer. Father, thank you for another time to come together. A blessing to be in your house that you may continue to feed us with your word. Father, I pray for our church family. Pray for those that couldn't be with us tonight due to sickness or travel. Father, I pray that you will be with them. You'll strengthen their bodies that they may be able to come back and worship with us. And if they're traveling, give them safe travel that they may come back and worship together. Father, I pray for us as a church as we'll continue to be a beacon in this community, showing Jesus Christ each and everywhere we go. Father, I pray for our pastor and his family that you will continue to watch over him, protect him from all things, and continue to feed him with your word that he may preach to us your truths. Father, be with us as we gather together. We worship you and call upon your name. And Father, tonight as we take time to give back to you from the many blessings that you've poured upon us, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver as it goes forth to spread thy kingdom here on this earth. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Turn around, welcome each other tonight. Let's worship together. Turn around, welcome each other. everyone Maze. What is maize? Is maize a color? 
I asked my wife, she said, I think it's yellow. This is gold and navy, amen. If you, if you really want to know what it looks like on prime time, just tune in to an Irish game and you'll see this color very, it's very prevalent when the Notre Dame fighting Irish are playing, amen. And somebody asked me this morning, said, Pastor, do you know they're Catholics? I said, do you know it's called football? We ain't going to church, amen. Uh, I really uh, had a good time up there yesterday. I told somebody, though, I've never seen so many people taking of the sacraments. <laughs> they take that part serious, I believe. Amen. Well, it's good to be here. I'm glad you came back out tonight, and uh, I'm looking forward to um, what the Lord's got for us. Uh, again, don't forget this coming week. Let me just um, I want to encourage you something. If you want to meet, I had several folks say, Preacher, we need to meet. I need to meet with you, and, and you've handed me notes, and I appreciate that, um, and I'll do my best to get to that, but I'm going to be honest with you. My wife will tell you this. Vanessa, I'm terrible about that. I got handed three notes this morning, and I can't tell you where one of them is right now, and so I want to, I want to apologize that I have been dialect in my duties, um, but a lot of times I, I just, I, I, if you hand me a note, most of the time I can take care of it, but if you want a meeting, I'd love to meet with you. We can talk about anything you want to talk about. Uh, but let me tell you the easiest way to do that to make sure that we get it done is if you will um, call the office and let Vanessa know. She's got a calendar back there, and she'll put it down. She knows what I'm doing, when I'm doing. And, and most of the time, we can pr pretty much set it anytime you want to. But um, the last two weeks has been so busy, or she'll tell you, it's been in and out and up and down and all around. Uh, and by the way, just let me say, it's good to have Brother Cecil back home in church tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, give, a, give the Lord a hand. Um, had, a, had a hard week last week and spent some time in intensive care and just, uh, but God took care of him. And I'm so thankful for that. It's an answer to prayer. Uh, and it's good to have him back in church with us tonight. But uh, if you want to meet, I'll be happy to meet with you. Uh, that goes for anybody here. I will say, ladies, if you want to meet, if you'll give me plenty of notice, and that way I can be sure and have Donna or Vanessa here um, to meet with us as well. So uh, I'd appreciate that, and that'd help us out a lot. Uh, take your Bible tonight. I want you to get over back over to the book of Exodus, and we may not get done with this. This may be a two-parter because we are on commandment number four in Exodus chapter number 20. How many, how many can tell me what commandment number four is? Oh, somebody come out there tonight. Amen. Remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. We're going to talk about that tonight. Um, we, we're going to look at that and dig real deep in there because uh, I tell you what, I, inevitably I get asked the question, well, preacher, is Sunday the Sabbath? Can I answer that for you right now? No, <laughs> it's not. It's the first day of the week. Uh, so what day is the Sabbath? Anybody want to tell me? Saturday. Saturday. That's exactly right. Those blessed seven-day Adventists are right about something. Amen. And we're going to talk about that. I love them. I, one of, uh, our pediatrician was seven-day Adventists. I've been around them. I love them. Two problems with them. Number one, they're worshiping a day instead of Jesus. Uh, and secondly, they don't eat meat. And... Uh, I don't trust a whole lot of folk don't eat meat. But anyway, that's just my personal opinion. Um, and my opinions sometimes get me in trouble. But Exodus chapter number 20, uh, verse 8, 9, 10, and 11. Looky there with me. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For six days the Lord made heaven, in six days he made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that are in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Uh, Looking at the perfect ten for a perfect life, this fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I, I told this story before, but I think it uh, is worth repeating, especially for our younger generation. Uh, there was a Scotsman named Eric Liddell. Anybody, that name seem familiar to anybody here? Uh, if you ever watch the movie, 
I think it's even – it might even be in the 70s. I don't even know if it made it into the 80s. Uh, but there was a movie uh, title called Chariots of Fire. How many ever heard that? You know the music, right? I mean, when I'm running sometime, I imagine that. Um, it, it's a really cool movie. If you haven't seen it, you ought to see it. Uh, but Eric Liddell served God as a missionary in China where um, – uh, he would die in an internment camp in 1945. Many years ago, his name uh, became known through that movie, Chariots of Fire. And the movie itself is built around the 1924 Olympics. And this, uh, this fellow refused to run on Sunday. Uh, he was the British record holder for the 100 meter. And when he discovered that the 100 meter race was scheduled to run on Sunday... He very quietly but firmly stated, I will not run on Sunday. Uh, his teammates criticized him. He was questioned by his country's leader, but uh, it, nothing but or no one would persuade him to run on Sunday. Uh, and so to solve the dilemma, a teammate ran the 100 meter on Sunday, and he ran the 400 meter during a weekday. And a lot of people felt like that he didn't have any chance of winning the 400-meter race. But he, not only did he win it, and that is the premise of the, uh, uh, of the movie is, not only did he win it, but he, he set a brand-new world record. Uh, and this is a guy that run the 100. If you, if you run or even if you don't run, you know there's a huge difference between a 100-meter and a 400-meter uh, the training's different. Everything about it is different. But this guy, uh, he broke a world record in the process. Um, and someone handed him a note when he finished. And the quote was on our from 1 Samuel 2, 3. For them that honor me, I will honor. And I feel that way about the Sabbath day. I believe uh, those that honor God uh, with with. Uh, celebrating and worshiping him uh, that God will honor them uh, running on Sunday for Eric would have broken the fourth commandment and that's something that he wasn't willing to do so uh, I wonder about that and I thought what would some of us have done if we're faced with a choice and I asked myself the question uh, would I have run uh, all that training uh, or would I not have but he did uh, he, he wouldn't do it. He felt like he would be violating God's command, and so therefore he didn't do it. Uh, William Gladstone was a British statesman, and he said this, Tell me what the young men of England are doing on Sunday, and I'll tell you what the future of England will be. Uh, that's pretty bold, isn't it? You, you tell me what they're doing on Sunday, and I'll let you know what their future is. And then uh, one of the agnostics, a noted agnostic, said, I can never hope to destroy Christianity until I first destroy the Christian Sabbath. D.L. Moody said more than 100 years ago, there's been an awful letting down in this country regarding the Sabbath during the last 25 years. And many a man has been shorn of spiritual power like Samson because he's not straight on this question. I thought... And I couldn't help but to wonder today, what in this world would Moody say about it today? He said, Moody suggested that we need to be straight on the matter of the Sabbath. And so uh, when we look at these Ten Commandments, I want to help you a little bit there because I think there's, uh, uh, there's some things that can be cleared up about uh, the Sabbath. There's some muddy water there, if you will. And so I just kind of entitled this little lesson, One Day a Week. One day a week. I didn't put the Sabbath in there, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about one day a week, and that's kind of the thought that I'd like to uh, preach on tonight. So uh, if you're taking notes, I want to give you uh, the first thought. We may not move past this. I hope we do, but if we don't, we'll try to come back next Sunday night and get it. But I want to talk with, about the Sabbath and our week. Verse 8 tells us to remember the Sabbath day. That commandment is referring to to a particular day of the week. What day is that? What does Sabbath mean? Seventh, right? Is that what it means? The Sabbath day. So it, God's covenant people, Israel, um, it, it's referring to a particular day. So what we're talking about, when we talk about 
the Sabbath. Uh, wh what is the Sabbath? Uh, what it is and what it isn't. It is a covenant. The Sabbath is a covenant. God's covenant people, Israel. Uh, God has a, has a special relationship with them that he doesn't have with anyone else. And God made us uh, several solemn agreements or, if you will, covenants with Israel. And one of those agreements is found in keeping the fourth commandment. And they're told in that fourth commandment to remember the Sabbath day. And the Lord, verse 11, blessed the Sabbath day. That's the two things, and that relates to that fourth commandment, but it also relates to the Jewish people. Uh, what day is the Sabbath day? It is Saturday, the seventh day of the week, right? The Sabbath day is the, what's the first day of the week? It's Sunday, that's right. It's not Monday, but it's Sunday, and if Sunday is the first day of the week, then the seventh day would be Saturday. You say, preacher, you're not making a very strong case for us as believers, but I will if you'll give me just a minute. And that's kind of what I want to do tonight because it gets kind of sticky here. I'll be honest with you. It gets kind of sticky and kind of icky in the Baptist church when you start agreeing that Saturday is the Sabbath, and why don't we keep it? And because, again, this covenant wasn't made with you and I. I had a fellow uh, at my last pastorate, that got mad, ended up, he and his wife left the church uh, because he asked me uh, a question concerning the Sabbath and I gave him an answer that I'm going to give to you tonight but it wasn't the answer he wanted to hear and so he got the pooch mouth and left. Now, folk, listen. If you're going to leave over this, whether you and I agree or disagree, uh, if this is going to cause you to change churches, that's pretty shallow. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. That's shallow, man. Uh, but but let's talk about it, all right? It's, oh, it's, it's open mic Sunday night. And if you disagree with me, wait till I get done, and then we can disagree afterwards. But just hear me out, all right? Verse number 9 specifically states that the Sabbath is the seventh day. And as we study Scripture, we find that the Sabbath as the seventh day was assigned between the Lord and the children of Israel. In the book of Exodus, if you want to turn there, you're welcome to. Chapter number 31, there's two verses, verses 16 and 17. Exodus chapter 31 and verses number 16 and 17. Here's what the Bible says. Wherefore the Lord, wherefore the children of Israel, sorry, shall keep the Sabbath day. See, that's specific, isn't it? Wherefore who? The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual, an ongoing covenant. Who's this covenant with again? Help me out. The children of Israel. That's specific. It's a sign between God, me, and the children of Israel. There it is again, twice, forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Wow. Wow. The seventh day was the sign of the covenant between God and the nation of Israel. And I want to clarify something here. The Sabbath and the Lord's Day, what do we call Sunday? It's the Lord's Day, right? That's what we call it. They're designed for two different sets of people and two different reasons. The Sabbath or Sunday was designed for whom? The children of Israel. And then the Lord's Day, I, I, I know... Uh, old timers talked about the Christian Sabbath. Uh, and when they did that, they were referencing a principle. And that principle was uh, pretty simple. We'll talk about it. I think it's important to understand because these, uh, there are those who tell you that worshiping on Sunday is the mark of the peace. I I'm not kidding you. You can't make this stuff up. If you worship on Sunday, uh, that's the mark of the beast. It's associated with the Antichrist. And some of our brothers at the Seventh-day Adventists, that's what they believe. I disagree with them. Still love them. But I think they're wrong. And I think we're right. Amen. We're Baptists. We all think we're right. Amen. <laughs> Even when we're not right, we think we are. Uh, down south, uh, you get a little further down south, they start buying up billboards down around Alabama uh, and, and space claiming this. But the Bible clearly states that keeping the Sabbath Saturday was a sign. Is that what it was? It was a sign. It was a covenant between God and the children of Israel, not the church. 
Now, understanding that, I want to explain this. The Sabbath and the Christian. So we see the first thing we talked about was, was the Sabbath and the covenant. And the covenant is to whom? Thank you. Amen. It's to the children of Israel. Now, what about us and the, the Christians? What about us and the Sabbath? Christian worship on Sunday, the first day of the week, rather than Saturday, the last day of the week, right? We worship on Sunday. When you come to the New Testament, you find the church meeting together, breaking bread together, worshiping together, and collecting offerings, amen, on the first day of the week. Not the seventh. When you get to the New Testament, uh, if, if you look at Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7, uh, I, if you don't want to if you don't want to turn there, write it down, go back and look at it because I want to give you biblical sound principles and answers so that you don't think that I'm just making this up because I'm a good Baptist and I'm walking lockstep with the Baptist. This is one thing I happen to believe that in spite of themselves, the Baptist has gotten right. Amen. I won't say that a lot. I'm harder on us than anybody else. But I believe they got this right. Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7. Here's what the Bible says. And upon the first day of the week, which is what? Sunday, the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Man, Paul, some of y'all get so mad at him if he's here. Because Paul would have started when I did this morning. And he'd be going at midnight tonight. Could you imagine that service? And that service happened on the first day of the week. Or what we know or come to know as the Lord's Day. Again in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. Write that down if you want Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse number 2. Here's what that says. It says that... Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Do you see the difference between the seventh day of the week and the, and the first day of the week? Why is that? What changed? The change of the day in the New Testament, the covenant from the seventh to the first day of the week is, is, is a great symbolic value. And that's what my dear brother asked me one Sunday. Preacher, tell me when did that change? Well, first of all, dear brother, that covenant was given to a specific group of people. God said this covenant is between me and who? The Jews. That's what God said. Now, then something happened, and this is, this is great symbolic value, and that's what it is. Just like the Sabbath Saturday was a symbol of covenant between the Lord and the children of Israel, the day the Lord rested, which was what? Sunday, right? In six days he created everything, and he rested, or Saturday he rested on the seventh. I'll get it right, I get confused myself. Just as the Sabbath Saturday was a symbol, the day the Lord rested, Sunday is symbolic of the relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ with the church. There's so much symbolism on this day. It was, the, it was on the first day of the week. That, what, what did Jesus do on the first day of the week? He arose. Amen. He came, he came back to life on the first day of the week. He rose from that Calvary. And the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ transformed the Sabbath into Sunday as an everlasting symbol of the finished work of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why do you worship on Sunday? It's, it's symbolic of, guess what? I'm not under the law anymore. <laughs> Can you be saved by the law? No. Absolutely not. The law cannot save you. That's why it's, it, it may be symbolic, but it's of the utmost importance. And this is a hill, my friend, that you and I need to be willing to die on if need be. It's, it's of a symbolic importance to us that 
since Jesus died on a cross and he rose from the dead, since Calvary and the resurrection, that that is a symbol to us, just like the Sabbath was a symbol to the Jew, that this work Jesus Christ did and accomplished, he did so on this first day of the week. It is a, it is a finished work. The Bible clearly teaches that Sunday is the church's day of worship, listen to me, and not Saturday. That's what the Word of God tells us. Sunday is the day of worship for Christ. See, I'm going to give you an opinion here, and I want you to write that down. Pastor's not preaching this as the Bible to me, but this is an opinion. To worship on Saturday, in my opinion, is to be living on the wrong side of Calvary. That's pretty quiet in here. If you want to get hung up there, then I need you to tell me how you were saved. If that law, that was, if, if you're not a Jew, first of all, you're wrong. <laughs> but if you are a Christian, then you ought to worship on that, that Sunday. Saturday is a covenant day for the Jewish people, a day of rest. Sunday is a celebration for the Christian. Do you know you're supposed to be celebrating today? Y'all are scared, aren't you? Time to bring out the organ and the tambourines, baby. Amen. Some of y'all scared to death. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to whip y'all up into a frenzy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother John, I mean, you need to work on that through the week. We're going to have to hit this. We're going to have to get this. Uh, I'd love to, to, every time I say something, have Brother John over there on the organ just tearing it up, man. <laughs> Amen. Uh, why? Because Sunday's a celebration day for the Christian. It was a day of rest for the Jewish people. It's a day of worship. Amen. If you're not worshiping today, there's something wrong with you. You need to be worshiping him. Why? Because he's alive. He did die on a cross. Absolutely. But he came. He was resurrected on that first day of the week. That day of worship. The Sabbath day. Day. Listen to me. Uh, we, we, need to, we need to understand that. Uh, the Sabbath and the Christian is different than the Sabbath and the covenant people of the Lord. The Sabbath and our week, I want you to think about that. When is the Sabbath day? Yes. You want me to admit it. They've got me on already on camera and they've got me on, 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 uh, on CD saying... You want that day? Absolutely. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is the Sabbath. But the day we worship is the Lord's day. Well, when did that change? I'm going to tell you one time. You ready for this? It changed at Calvary. <laughs> That's when it changed, folks. I, and, and you, Everybody here may believe that, and I hope you do. Um, but it's been my experience at most places I've ever preached we get a little bit hung up and we get a little bit confused and we get a little bit frustrated and it's, uh, of course, you know, imagine Baptists wanting to fight about something, right? <laughs> but, but, but I'm not going to fight with you about it. I'm just telling you what, what I believe the Word of God teaches us and I think we've, we've, we've laid a pretty sure foundation um, tonight that the Sabbath and our week, yes, it's Saturday, but it's not the day we worship on anymore. What changed? Calvary. When did it change? Calvary, he changed every bit of that. And, and that, that old Jewish law, it never was to you and I anyway. That was to God's covenant people. And over and over, I just I used two verses. It's all over the Old Testament. And I'll be glad to give you some more if you want them. That God specifically says, this is for my people, the Jewish people. This is my covenant with them. But when Jesus came and died, then he, he gave us a day of worship. Saturday was a day of was a day of rest under the covenant, but under Christ and the finished work of Calvary, it is and it always will be until Jesus comes back, a day of worship. We celebrate him today. Why do pastors beat it into people's heads as best they can? Sunday come to church. Sunday come to church. Sunday come to church. Because it's our day of worship. We're celebrating today. Amen. We're celebrating that we have a Savior that's alive and can hear us when we pray. So that's the Sabbath in our week. The second thing I want to give you here, I hope we got through that one without any confusion, 
is the Sabbath and our work. When we look at the fourth commandment, we find that our work schedule is plainly addressed. This is a good one. We, we read in verses 9 and 10. Six days shalt thou what? And do all thy what? Work. Well, there went the whole welfare case. Amen. God, <laughs> do you know there's some countries that dropped to a four-day work week? And some has went to a three-day work week. But, but God here under the covenant is telling the Jewish people, six days you need to work. Amen. God, what does that tell you about God and work? Does God expect us to work? You better believe he does. Amen. We don't serve a deadbeat God. Can I get a witness right there? I know that ain't popular, especially in America. We've Americanized everything. God expects us to work. And six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is, that is within the gate. God speaks about our labor. He talks about our work. God, I believe that he wants us to notice that he's talking about our work. Look, he, he gives us this plain and simple. This is a good foundation um, for us. Uh, that, that, that God expects men to work. It is man's responsibility to work. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. If you look at that fourth commandment, it, fourth commandment, it doesn't say it's recommended that you work. It doesn't say you might want to think about working. No, it says thou shalt labor and do thy work. Now, I know what some of y'all are thinking. You think you got me in a trap. That's to the Jews. <laughs> I can hear it now. Amen. That's not to us, preacher. That's to the Jews. We'll get there. <laughs> it's a commandment of God that these Jews work. Work is the responsibility of a man. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, write it down. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 and 12, the apostle Paul picks up on this right here. Was Paul a Jew? Yeah, here's what he said in verse 11 and, and, and 12. He said, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Wow. So not only does it get addressed under the covenant, it's also addressed in the New Testament. Does God expect man to work? Yeah. He sure does. You better believe it. Apparently, there are some people not working, and Paul admonished them. And he's very plain when he says, uh, he says to someone who will not work. Verse 10, verse 10 of that same, we, we read verse 11 and 12. Let's go back and get verse 10. For even when we, we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. How many ever heard your grandpa say that? Amen. If you don't work, what? You don't eat. Amen. I've heard that my whole life. And the apostle Paul's the one that said it. In plain, everyday language, Paul said, if a man won't work, let him starve. Wow. Pretty sure that's not very loving. I know. I know. But remember, this is to the Jew. <laughs> and then it goes on over. But if a man can work, see, li listen, if a person can't work due to some physical problems, I, I get that. Caring people. Uh, are to step in and give assistance, but if a man can work and won't work, the Apostle Paul said you shouldn't even help him. Wow. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Wow. There's your first farmer. From the beginning, God established that principle. Man has a responsibility to work, but also man has a rest from the work. I'm talking about, I'm talking here about that lord's day a day of celebration a day of rest verse 9 tells us that we're to put in a full week of work but there's going to be a day in the week that we are to rest from our work and that can be the lord's day as well verse 10 but the seventh day of the sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor maidservant nor cattle nor stranger that is within the gate god god commands us to work but God also commands us to take a day off of work. And somewhere in the past few years, the expression 24-7 has made it into our vocabulary. Uh, but, but I'm here to tell you there should be a time. There should be a time of rest. 
And I think God would have us not just to, to rest, but God would have us to worship on that day, the Lord's day. That is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will worship. I will glorify God. I'll be glad in that day. Amen. Listen to me. This is not a, I'm thankful that I'm not the old Levitical priest because guess who had to work on the Sabbath day then? Anybody ever slaughtered a cow? Huh? Or a goat? That guy had to work, man. I'm thankful I'm on the right side of Calvary. Can I get a witness? Amen. We're living on the right side of Calvary. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. God did not take the seventh day off because he was tired or ready to collapse. He did so to establish the principle for man, to illustrate the need for man to do the same. The Sabbath and our week, and then the Sabbath and our work, and we may finish up tonight, the Sabbath and our worship, that's where I wanted to get to. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God says he blessed the Sabbath day and ha hallowed it. This one day of the week that's addressed by the fourth commandment not only involves work, but it also in, it involves worship. The word holy is used in verse 8. speaks about making pronouncing or, or observing something as clean. The word hallowed in verse 11 is the same word, and he's telling us that we're to make and observe one day in the week as his day. And that day is the day that we have set aside as Sunday, the weekly assembling of the saint. It reminds us that we're to assemble together one day a week. There's a lot of people who never think of breaking the commandment that say we are not to steal, kill, or commit adultery. How many agrees with that? We shouldn't steal, amen? We shouldn't kill, right? We shouldn't commit adultery, am I right? We also shouldn't lay out a church on Sunday. <laughs> That's good preaching right there. <laughs> I'm just going to wait a minute. <laughs> Let me do it one more time. We need to be at the house of God on Sunday. Amen. That's better. <laughs> it's a commandment. We're not going to break steel, cheat, all, all that other. We, I preach, we believe in the Ten Commandments. We're not going to break that one. Well, when you get to this one, it becomes a little bit fuzzy for most Christians. Amen. Well, that's Saturday, preachers. No, 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 you're missing the point. We set, we set aside this day, the weekly assembling of the things. A lot of people would never think of breaking those other ones, but they don't care to break this and, you know, think twice about it. That's a commandment. I, I guess uh, this is an optional command, right? Uh, I, I'm not even going to beat that horse to death because you know how I feel about it. Amen. When the church doors are open, we ought to be here. We, our children wouldn't have a drug problem if they had a drug problem. Amen. We ought to be dragging them to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. We ought to drag them to revival sometimes. And then listen to me. If they get drugged to church, most of the time they don't end up being drugged any other way. I think church is such an important, plays an important part in, in our lives and in, in, in how we um, serve the Lord. We shouldn't break that commandment. It's just as serious as breaking any of the others. And, and I'm talking about Sunday. A lot of people act like Sunday's just any other day. I've heard that before. They don't, they'll never take what God says about it uh, serious, making it serious or holy. But I want you to know, if this is the Lord's day. On this side of Calvary, this is the Lord's day. This is the day that he's given to us as believers to worship and celebrate and rest. Where should a Christian be on the Lord's Day? I believe they ought to be in church on Sunday. <laughs> I think God commands it. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25, you know the old saying, don't, don't, uh, or the verse, we Baptists beat it up, not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to assemble, but when we're here, we don't need just to assemble. We need to have a worshiping attitude. Deuteronomy 5, 12, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. It is the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. And then he said in verse 15, And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God command thee to keep the Sabbath 
day. God's saying, listen to me. It's important to the Jew to keep the Sabbath day. It's important to the Christian to keep the Lord's day. I love when the psalmist says, uh, chapter 5, uh, Psalms chapter 5, verse 7, but as for me, I'll come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in the fear, in thy fear, will I worship toward thy holy temple. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. There's one day a week when we are to rest as workers and rejoice as worshipers, and that day is what we celebrate Sunday, the first day of the week. Here's the thing. What are you doing on Sunday? I hope you're resting, and I hope that you're worshiping. That's the word of the Lord. That's what God has for us tonight, and that's what I want us to do. That fourth commandment is just as important as any of the other ones when it comes to keeping the Lord's day, that first day of the week. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. I pray you would bless this week for us. I pray, God, that, um, that we would take this uh, business of being at God's house on the Lord's day serious. I pray, Lord, that we wouldn't get so hung up on other stuff, that we would know that this day is about you, about worshiping you. It's about rest for us, and we thank you for giving it to us. I pray now, God, that you would bless our time together here. Uh, Lord, just uh, immerse us in your word. Help us, God, to do what you've called us to do here at New Haven Baptist Church. And one of that is, one of those things are to worship you on this, the first day of the week, on the Lord's day. Help us to live on the right side of Calvary. Father, now we love you. We praise you. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. And you're done before 7 o'clock, choir. Get up here. <laughs>